So we have arrived at Jordan's garage at Low Baller GTR on Instagram and we're gonna get Jordan to give us a walk around of this garage because every single car in here is unique and amazing. You can probably see them in the background as I'm walking by. This is amazing. It's like Hot Wheels in real life. Just look at that. What in the world? All right, we're gonna get a tour from Jordan because my, my mind is blown right now. This is so cool. You've got an insane collection of cars here. Thanks, man. Like, Thanks. kudos to you, because they're all unique. Can we do a quick run through? Yeah, yeah. An hour and a half on each car. Not actually, <laughs> no. So we've got an R33. Yep, so this was, uh, this was owned by HKS. Uh, they took delivery of this car brand new uh, in 1995. So this was the parts development car for really all the jigs and stuff that we see for all the HKS R33 parts. Like most uh, Japanese demo cars, it went to their graveyard to die for about 15 years. And then um, the guy that I ended up meeting at HKS, we ended up become, becoming friends. He kind of convinced them to pull the car out for Tokyo Auto Salon in 2019, so they did. They restored the car exterior, kind of showcased some of their new parts. Um, and long story short, I ended up acquiring the car from BH Auction okay. um, in Japan. And after I did that, BH Auction reached out to me and they were like, Oh hey, the you know the CEOs of our two companies are friends. Would you be interested in restoring the car even more and putting it back to Sakuba spec? Uh, and I was like, yes. You know? Yeah. So we did. They uh, put a whole new powertrain in it. We did the stroker motor, their new uh, step two stroker motor. This is serial number, serial number one. So V cam step two, uh, their race five speed, the same car, the same training setup that's in their Group A car. Okay. Um, those parts aren't even available for sale. Those are just uh, out of the, the race car, um, and basically made around 750 all wheel. And then Max Orito, I was supposed to go there, but COVID got in the way to pick the car up. And then Max Orito uh, drove it around Sakuba. They did like 35 laps around Sakuba and dialed it in. So it was really cool. I got a video that Luke Huxton made of it. And um, the turbo is the size of my head. Yeah, it's a monster <laughs> big single, man. So that's, that's, their, crazy. that's their new big single. Okay. So in, back in the day, it was a, a smaller twin turbo car. It held scuba lap record and then the zero to 300 km record. And oh, it was within, cool. in 96, it was within about a half second what a Senna does it today. So you have wow. to think, man, in 96, that's 20 years ago. Yeah, so yeah. mind bending acceleration, right? So yeah, it was, uh, it was really cool. That's a lot of history with this yeah. car, and that's what makes it so rare. I like that you kept the whole livery on it too and yeah, everything. Yeah, 90s era, same as yes. the livery or in the 90s. Fun fact, yeah, the same vinyl company does their livery. So the same company that did this livery in the mid 90s did it recently in 2012. That's awesome. Yeah, Con yeah. Continuity, C continuity. That's yeah, 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 exactly. We've got ourselves an R34. Yes, this is a uh, Motor X34. This was car number 12 that they found. Okay. Um, I actually got this car at a dealership. Oh, wow. Um, uh, my friend worked at that dealership and he hit me up and said, hey, you're never going to believe this, but someone came in with a Motor X R34 and just tried to get a buy bid done. But it's a normal dealership and they were like, well, there's no way we're going to give six figures for a Skyline. Yeah. So he called me, he's like, it's black. And I was like, I had a work okay. conference, so I'm like, I'm on my way. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I basically feel like I left the work conference early and uh, went and saw it in person and it was just phenomenal. Wow. And my friend Dan Hogan, uh, he owns a shop locally called Hoagie Shine. They re-sprayed the car. Although the car was really nice, the interior was immaculate. It only had about 36,000 kilometers. Okay. And there was just, every panel had like a little chip that couldn't be paint corrected. And just, you know, uh, early 2000s Japanese paint, not well, the best. the same technology, yeah. So, you know, we figured, hey, well, all the glass came out. We got yeah. a full service manual. We did everything right. All new old stock mm. trim. Yeah. And really just kind of put together. It's only got 40,000 kilometers now. So it's a big, mid 25,000 mile car, so. Motor X legal, yes, R34, legal. that's yep. amazing. How many of them were total? Like So, my car was number 12, 11 had been documented. So oh, this okay. was 12 and now we're at 17, okay. and um, there's a couple guys who are really good at blogging these, and yeah. uh, GTR, uh, like a registry on the GTR registry, and we think there's actually 17. So we think all the 34s have been accounted for, there's okay. like six Motor X cars total that have still not been found. I see. So they could be in collections, this car yeah. was in a collection for about 13 years, so that's why I think it was 
hidden, you know? What do you think the value of the Motor X car is going to do once the regular R34 is illegal? So I think the Motor X story will add a very little bit. Okay. I just don't think it's going to make that big of a difference unless you really loved the story. Yeah. But so many people are like, oh, they're just going to tank. Well, they're, you know, 33s and 32s have proven that to be not the case. Mm -hmm. And when finally something becomes available in this market, you know, it's just like a supply and demand. And there's definitely not nearly as much supply of clean R34s as there is demand. I absolutely. So I think that. they're just going to keep skyrocketing. Outside of the Motor X story, I think just any R34 will do good. And I mean, ignoring it being a Motor X car, this one is pristine, low miles and everything. Yeah, yeah, V-Spec nice. 2 and 01. Yeah. So this really won't even be eligible for import until 2026. So you have oh, to okay. think 24 is when the first Series 99s are okay. available. So the special stuff, V-Spec 2s, M-Spec, M-Spec NERS, those will be 2026, 2027. Gotcha. Yeah. And now we have an R35, yeah. but this is a special R35. Yeah, this is a T-spec. Yeah. So in the, to send off the R35 with a bang, yes. the, the platform is they're now retiring the platform for the R36. They brought back two um, really awesome, you know, classic colors, Midnight Purple, which this is, and then the Millennium Jade. The Jade so, is cool too. Jade is really cool. I just have always love Midnight Purple. Yeah. And I think they made 100 total units worldwide in both colors. And rumor is that the U.S. got 22 total T-Specs okay. and nine Midnight Purple cars. One so this could be one of nine. We'll know more, though, as the registry gets built. But that, that's the rough. Uh, Australia, believe it or not, got a ton of these because these no longer meet their crash test ratings. Oh, really? So Australia, in some crazy twist of fate, got like 10 Nismos, which is astronomical. Holy crap. And a, a large majority of T-Specs. I want to think over, over 20 went to Australia in all the colors. Still got the window sticker on it, too. <laughs> yeah, it's got I mean, 32 miles on it. Oh, man, you're going to keep this pristine. Yeah, yeah, no. we got to take a look at this paint. Look at that. Got my phone flashlight shining on it. The flake is absolutely gorgeous. To anybody who thinks it's a regular R35, you are much mistaken. They are definitely special. Yeah, it's a Nismo fenders, yep. carbon ceramic brakes, some little Nismo cues, uh, like a really beautiful dark green leather interior that looks, yes. doesn't sound cool, but it looks really good with the paint. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's definitely nothing crazy, but I think just the limited number in that, like our, all, all R35s, they get heavily modified. Yeah. So I think stock cars in the future will just be, you know, really valuable. You know, I get to drive a lot of pretty cool cars too, but I had an R35 for a week, it was the anniversary blue one. Yes. And that was a car that more than even like a GT500, Ferraris, people were asking for rides in it. Yeah. Everybody seemed to view it as like, it was the GTR, it's a poster car. Yeah. And I was like, can I get a ride? I'm like, it's an R35. But that was a cool car. Yeah, Absolutely. The, 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 you're talking about the blue one? Yes. Yeah, that's the like Bayside blue. blue. Oh, yeah. it looks so nice. The 90s yeah. color. You yes, know? it looks the, awesome. The vintage colors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we're into the AMG portion of the collection, or actually partially of it. Partially, <laughs> yeah. So this is a CLK 63 Black Series. Yes. I always love these, yeah. and you know, they now have just really blown up. Absolutely. All the Black Series are going crazy, yes, dude. Yes, finally. I mean, AMGs, I think, were awesome cars, but they never did super good in market. And now, man, the Black Series are blowing up. But, you know, Olin's from the factory, the most rigid ride ever. Um, in 2008, rear seat delete, I think, before that was okay. cool for manufacturers to do. So I just think it's probably just a great example of a really hardcore road going car, probably like what is the first iteration of like many to come from a lot of manufacturers like post 08. How many miles on this one? 17,000. So low miles, yeah, low C miles. CLK Black. This was the first Black Series we got in America because the SLK yes. never came here. Yep. So we had CLK Black, C63 Black, and then the more modern ones, SLS. GT Black Series, SLS obviously is the coolest in my opinion. I, like, like SLS. Yeah, I like, would trade, the price oh man. Is crazy on those. That's an entire engine. That is, it's a unique engine. That, oh. is, uh, that is a friend's engine. Okay. Um, without diving into too much detail, that is a McLaren P1 engine. Oh, what? Yeah, that is a P1 engine. So that okay. might be the only, I think, power unit outside of a car, I think, in North America. That's sure. crazy. Yep. So All right. Uh, you can see over here, you got the hybrid system cables. And then oh, yeah. this High is voltage. the electric motor that, you know, the hybrid is yeah. for the transmission. Holy crap. But really uh, unique, unique uh, thing to have on a pallet. He has the whole car basically on pallets. So, wow. Yeah. But the Demon box here, everything you get when you buy a Dodge Demon, which $1 we have. $1 option. $1 option, $1 the option. cheapest way. Yeah. And somehow 300 Demons did not get special. I don't know that. why you I would do that. I have no yeah. idea why you would. It's a buck, you know? I think they did that for like legal reasons, right? Because they couldn't, they wanted it on the car. Yeah, and I, it was the same with the passenger seat for the yeah. dollar. So yeah. I think there was some weird issue where it's like we had to offer it, so they Correct. just made it basically free it's, for $1. It's a no brainer. Yeah. You clearly like. Your shades of black. I do. You know, just, <laughs> Except uh, for the, we get the 993. Yeah, except that one stands out. We're yeah. Living a little bit. Uh, yeah. That and the Ferrari are yes. two different colors. We got a plus demon. Crazy, crazy. Pretty much a drag car for the street. They're epic. Viper ACR. Yeah. Is it extreme? 
This is an extreme. Oh. So this car, again, like a lot of things in here, well before the market blew up. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I had a little over 600 miles. I, I paid 115 for this car. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, they were like trying to give these away back then. And that's like, actually yeah. what he said. He said because it's a stripe delete, which is really sought after now that it was sitting. And it was triple oh black God. stripe delete. And I'm like, well, I think it looks, you know, rad. It so, looks mean. Yeah, that was, uh, it had it a few months. But we've been to the track a couple times with it. This okay. is hands down one of the most aggressive, awesome cars. You know, I think ever made definitely by American standards, yes. but they're just so good. You have to take this to the track to yes. ever fully appreciate what an ACR can do. I've gotten a ride around the track in an ACR once with a professional driver, and it was just remarkable what we could do. And it's like, doesn't have the crazy electronic traction control stability like a McLaren. It's just mechanical engineering grip and power. Yeah. And I mean, it's a massive V10 in the manual. What, what could you want more of? I've got a Dodge Neon SRT4. 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 Hurting feelings since 2003. But I, I think it was just a really important car yeah. in the sport compact segment. So, you know, you're 2003, your early 2000s, and frankly, high 13 second stock quarter mile times at a four cylinder was really impressive. And it was affordable. It yeah, was like 19, affordable performance. $19,000 brand new. Is this one like insane low miles? No, actually, one no. owner, 67,000 okay. miles okay. with a dealer installed stage three. So, okay. Dodge offered those stage kits. Shout out to Dodge because they were yeah. warranted. That was awesome. And makes about 400 wheel. And it was totally warranted as long as the dealer put it on. That's awesome. Yeah, so I thought that was always really cool about uh, Chrysler for doing that. A pair of Hondas? A pair of Hondas is a real, this is a low mile. This is a, a, a 99 SI and it's got 11,000 miles on it. Wow. And this was a two owner car. I have the stock suspension still. And I had just found brand new, new old stock SI wheels. That okay. We're gonna, so we're gonna put this car back to stock, kind of just, I think it's awesome. It looks really tasteful, but I think something so low mileage probably deserves yeah. to be stock again. You and know? a Prelude. Prelude, 22,000 mile car. Oh, wow. Yep, uh, older gal owned it out of Washington. Super yeah. duper clean. It's probably like the mintiest Honda interior like I've ever seen. Just like no cracks. The shift knob is still matte. Wow. I'm just like blown away by it. And that's kind of why I got it, just for the condition. I thought this was like the fastest car ever in 1999, 2.2 .2 liter. <laughs> yeah. It was like a torque monster. Like, Your definition has changed yeah, slightly yeah, now, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 times have changed. Yes. Um, daily driver, this is actually this high mile. E46. Yep, E46. Probably one of the, I just recently got this car. My wife has an M3 that we love, mm -hmm. and I just had no idea how cool the E46 was. Yeah. This was the first time driving it when I bought it, and it's just such a great car for the money. When M cars were still truly about, although they, the CS models have made a comeback. I, I think, think so, and like yeah. the CSLs are trying to like bring yeah. these lightweight additions back. But I think this is, like you said, it's, I don't know, something about early 2000s cars. I think that was like the end of an era for yeah. stability control, and that's yeah. when a lot of regulation came in. Yeah. So now we have ourselves some V10 twin turbo gated manual epicness, a Garrido LP560 gated manual, which is super rare overall. Like, there yeah. aren't many gated LPs out there. No, I think 53, 25 of them were the rear wheel drive. 550s, yep. yep. The two wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all white. LP 560s are rare and manual. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And this is a Dallas Performance built. This car is twin turbo. Okay. About uh, 1700 rear wheel. So oh, okay. RS1 car, it's about 2000 crank. So it went uh, 211 in the standing half mile. So it's, <laughs> so, it's, <laughs> so it's fast. Yeah. It's, really <laughs> it's a little fast, yeah. That's epic. Dallas Performance. Twin Turbo Garrido with the carbon buckets here. And just the gated makes it so much more special. Especially OE, not like a gated swap. That's an OE. Yep. Cool. Super Legera wing on the back? Super Legera wing and just Spurs, aero. Yeah. But yeah, um, otherwise Vorsteiner front bumper because the yeah. uh, OEM bumper fails at about 185. Oh, okay. So after that, it like just disintegrates. The lower lip peels off and we did a pull when we were coming back in all the firefighters that are at the end of the track were like jaw dropped. And I was like, what happened? You know, like, I mean, I got off, I got the out of the car the face. Pole. Yeah, the whole car had like no bottom jaw. Oh my God. Crazy looking. We got ourselves a 996. Yeah, you know, I know they're hated, but you know, I just, this is a, the turbo that was on the showroom when I was in high school. Yeah. I love them. You know, I think they got a lot of bat flack because they were not air-cooled. Mm -hmm. And Transition. now nothing is air-cooled. So I think uh, the next thing to attack is the headlights, right? Yes. So it's like, I, I think they're super duper cool. I love them. And it, it's like the end, like we were talking about, just that retro early 2000s, you feel really big in the car, mm -hmm. you know, proportionate, uh, proportions like yeah. they're not like they are today. So I just love it for that reason. It just feels super uh, early 2000s. And this is the newest and... Yeah. Amazing car added to the collection. I love this. Yeah, it's a uh, 993. It's a GT2 Tribute, but okay. it's, you know, it's a technical made in Japan built the car. They're, they're a humongous Porsche tuner. 
and builder. Um, it went to the UK, it was exported there. Porsche and Norway did the 993 twin turbo motor. Uh, Dave the trimmer out of the UK did the entire interior. Uh, all this is leather. Uh, did the GT2 door cards, the GT2 rear seat delete. Um, and then I just had Patrick Motorsport here in Phoenix go through the whole car. Uh, we did a bunch of work to it, just got old ignition parts yeah. replaced, some old vacuum lines, just little tune-up stuff, and it runs like a top, made a little over 400 wheel. Oh, my and God. And just, for how light it is, it really boogies. It's a nice, well-balanced car. It's a lot of fun. And the paint, this is a one of four with the sunroof delete? Yeah, with the slick top, yeah. uh, as, 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 as they're a green metallic. It's so. beautiful. Yeah. It is absolutely, we saw it in the sun yesterday at Cars and Coffee. And yeah, it doesn't gold do justice until it's no. in the sun. In the sun, it was unbelievably amazing. And I have a newfound love of the 993. I was driving through on two supercars out here in Arizona, actually. There's C4S. It's not fast. This is definitely way faster. But just the analog feel, the weight of the steering, the it's, just, it's smaller, lighter. Oh my God. But this, man, that's got to be epic, dude. The floor mounted pedal is so unique. That feeling yeah. of having the pedal like go in on the floor versus being up in it. It's just really cool, very different. This is a real, really cool one. This is a daily, isn't it? E63? Yeah, this, one, this is daily. Yeah. This is, um, this is you know, E63 wagon. I've always loved the estate cars. I know they didn't catch on. Fast wagons are um, awesome, dude. I bought it, and no joke, three weeks later, Mercedes announces discontinuation of the, the E63 V8. Yeah. And, like, the price is just blew up. <laughs> so I was, like, super glad uh, we did this when we did, because I think they're amazing, but, man, you know, 180 grand now in pri you know, private parking. Used ones, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So I think, you know, awesome car. Maybe not $200,000 awesome, but I wanted one, and I'm really glad I did it now. Yep. This is different too. Yeah, a little Saturday Night Bruiser, just some <laughs> America. It's a '56 with a it's a Chevy Big Block, okay. and a Doug Nash five speed, um, like 550 horse, but just a really fun car. Yeah. Again, yeah, Dan Hogan did this like faux Tina paint job. Tub, yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I love that teal, but I like black. So, yeah, uh, fits it all together. Yep. Yeah, Big old American Cruiser. Yeah, it is. It's just yeah. a yeah, just heavy Chevy, man. Yeah. The fact that you have this lineup here and then this, it's like polar opposites yeah. of the automotive world. We've yeah. got big American Cruiser and then tell me about this car. <laughs> so this car is unique. This car was owned for a long time in Hiroshima by a gentleman. It was built in the early 2000s um, and it is uh, really all of the body works off the GT500 550 that was raced by uh, Hitsumaya Racing. Nomad was the sponsor. Um, so Hitsumaya managed the 550s and then the Lark F1s. Oh, wow. And it was just an awesome car that started life as a Euro car and kind of just like the HKS car, when they're done with stuff, they just take it apart and throw it away. So there's two body kits. This car wears one of them. One of them just recently sold. Um, but it was started life as a, a, a Euro spec 550. It got all of this work done at Nakamura Engineering. Um, the build took about a year. It had some good coverage in a, mag a couple magazines. But the coolest part about this car is it is 100% race. It is on air jacks or over there. You plug the compressor in, it comes off the ground. Holy crap, right yeah. over there, I see it, yeah. Um, but it is still fully street legal because it started life as a Euro spec car. So it's still yeah. like brake lights, tail lights, has actually a race AC unit in it. Um, you can see the gated manual shifter in still there. Still gated. And then the, uh, the side exit right here, just like the race car. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's a unique sound experience. But wow. it's so cool because you can drive it on the street. So it's just, I really like loving race cars on the street. Yeah. That's like my, that's like a real obsession right now. <laughs> you know, it's so much fun to drive such a raw car and then have it be completely street legal. It's got a wing the size of a dining table. Yeah, this would make three RS owners <laughs> feel like sad about their downforce. This is crazy. And it's street legal. Wow. 100% street legal. Wow. That. I did not expect it to be street legal. Is that functional up here too? Yeah, it is. So if we open the door, that, I'm gonna tell you, that works phenomenal. In the summer, yeah. it is actually a, it really works by putting air in the cab. You come in there and you can see you got the vents. Oh you wow. You that thing right at your head and it really works well in like a 70 degree day. It keeps the cab inside nice and cool. Jordan, when is it ever 70 degrees in Arizona? Winter. <laughs> Winter, oh, true, okay. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> The st oh my gosh, this is a straight race car. Yeah, this was cool. So Stack and Momo did a collab, and they only made this wheel for a little bit of time because it was so much money. Yeah. But it was so, they, they tested the wheel when they built this car. So this was the first car to get that wheel. Um, and then it just didn't sell that well because yeah. like $2,000 for a steering wheel is a lot of money. That is a lot. Holy crap. All right. What's your favorite? <sighs> if, you had, if you had to pick your favorite. Can you? It's like making. I would, you say, pick your I would kid. say, like, if you, it is. Yeah. I would say, like, if I just had to not sell one car, yes. it would be this car. The HKS car. And it's just because the opportunity to own it was incredibly rare. 
And then getting to like talk to now someone who I really consider one of my friends that worked at HKS and we still talk. And just they were so kind when they did everything. They initialed my initials in the block when they serial numbered it. And I even asked them to do that. I just thought it was so cool because they knew how much I loved the brand. Yeah. I think they were hyped too. Have so somebody I restore just, it knowing yeah. it. Yeah. So I just I talked to them every day for like six months and they would send yeah. me photos and it just has such a special place in my heart. And it's just it's probably again, just like the Ferrari, it's a very yeah. raw car on the street. One more question. Next. What's like your dream, dream car that you want really P1? P1. Yeah, I saw the piece of art up there. Yes, yeah. that is that is my Halo car, and you know I've wanted to do it. The market got hot, mm -hmm. but now I look at it. The hybrid systems are getting ready to age out. Yes. So I'm waiting for the Speedtail retrofit battery to go in some used ones. Oh, and when that happens, they okay. did. Okay. So once that happens, and maybe someone else eats that two hundred and fifty thousand dollar oh, bill for a battery, yeah. Um, we could add. And then one. you buy one. Yeah, but I think and it's going to be black. Yes, yes. <laughs> if that, we'll send it back to MSO and get it. I, get it. I, guess, they, I guess they do that. But yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah. When, yeah, when you're spending that much money, I think yeah, it's going to be the right do. color. Yeah. So, yeah, black for sure. I'm certain you're going to have one. I hope so. Make man. it happen. Make it happen, dude. This is so. amazing. Thank you so much for letting me check out the cars here. Anytime, man. SVJ and TRS left. Those are going to Monterey? They're going to Monterey. Car week. Yep. Dude, we yep. have car week next week. It hasn't really sunk in yet. My first one. I'm excited. Your first one? Yeah, oh, you're going to love it, dude. You're yeah, going to love it. Absolutely love it. Low baller GTR on Instagram? Yep. Follow him if you want to see these amazing cars, and you should because they are absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, Jordan. Appreciate yeah, it. No problem, man. Thanks, dude. All right, we're going to go grab some lunch now. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog because I certainly enjoyed checking out these cars, and they're all so unique. It's not just like all the same JDM car or AMG or whatever. This is a really, really unique collection of really special cars. So make sure you follow Jordan. Thanks for watching.